All right, Ben Mang, welcome to, let's call it, episode 11.5. Oh, yeah. The Young Page Views episode, the white, whatever you want to say, the Barcelona Outdoors episode is here. It's the Day Porno Show with Eddie and Company, presented by Taser. Did you see your family this Thanksgiving? Remind. We don't remind even you? have to do that, Reed, Eddie. It's a special read, so shout out to Taser. No, it's, we're going to give them. Yeah. But this is what you get when you're the sponsor. You never know. You never know when a Taser will strike, theoretically. You know, Chea... And his fucking monotone voice is like, oh, you're doing an episode? They're going to be sponsored? Yeah, they're the sponsor. They get every extra benefit. This will be a very, you know, listen to thing. Um, and maybe, who knows? We can't, we can't use the taser as a weapon, but maybe if IP throws himself at the mercy of the crown and I get to tase him 100 times, I'll think about letting him keep his job. So you never know. Maybe it'll be, like, included. Yeah, and you know, if you're outdoors, you should bring a taser. You never know what you're going to come to. Eddie. Right? You like that? See, if you're outdoors, if you're going hunting, you're going fishing, you need that taser. So go to taser.com, use promo code BARSTOOL for 15% off. Please note, a limited number of states require a permit for use, and taser products cannot be purchased for personal use in Hawaii or Rhode Island. You can now buy one in Connecticut. All right, Dave. So if you listen to the episode on Tuesday, you know what happened. If you saw Black Friday, the commotion, Cyber Monday, you were mad at Young Page Views for not tweeting. Uh, you came down, 700 people applied for the uh, position with Barstool Outdoors. And then we're here right now, episode 11.5, because he released a video last night on Instagram. Uh, I haven't seen it, Eddie. So there you go. It's a, it's a real reaction. You haven't seen any of this. You kind of know a little bit based on Twitter. but Yeah, all right. So I'm going to start it now then. Here we go. Good evening, folks. Live from uh, the side of the road here in uh, Michigan, on the road to film with Steve Rinella of Meat Eater, the biggest collaboration Barcelona Outdoors has ever done. Finally getting into the biggest splash into hunting we could possibly get into. He was just on Rogan, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. I get a text from someone, hey man, they're carpet bombing your soul on uh, Dave Portner's show. You should probably listen. Not totally unexpected after the past few months and um, Black Friday, everything, right? I didn't know I didn't know what day it came out. I'm like, I thought it was like Thursday, whatever. But I, listen, what the fuck is that? I almost wrapped my car around a telephone pole. It was about as bad as you could possibly have. Wait, and Eddie, I'm just going to stop and go, but what does he mean to know what day Black Friday was? Is that what he just said? And I'm going to try to be open-minded here. So I'm not going to like, I've heard a lot of bad things. I'm going to try to be open-minded, but I think he's just said he didn't know what day Black Friday was. And I've known Dave, I've followed Dave Fortnoy since like 2008, 2009. I've never known him to be a liar. I've never known him. He's always like a on the record receipts guy. So I don't think that these are lies i think that um some stuff that's said on there is completely untrue right and maybe i'm taking it hey i've been a fucking bad communicator or something because this is whatever's happening is incorrect right so what i'm going to do my little 12 step process here the first step let me communicate better right now the first thing i got to set straight dave's saying oh you didn't build barcel outdoors yp didn't build out barcel outdoors social he didn't do anything we built that our team 1000 percent patently false so Every single post that's ever been posted on Barcelona Outdoors Instagram account has come from these hands, this brain, me. Not a single human on Earth, Jupiter, anywhere has ever posted but me. Every video, picture, caption, story, even the unfunny captions, that was me, I'll admit it. Tough. Anyways, I'm proud of it because I started it before I even worked for Barstool back in my parents' basement in Missouri at 2.46 a.m., back when I brought the Wallaby into Barstool when Dave almost like was amused by me back then, a long fucking time ago. And I've been doing it every day ever since. Barstool Outdoors TikTok zero to 709,000. I'm super fucking proud of that. That's these hands too, right? As far as I know, and, and, and so I talked to Gav, Gav, he, well, that's new. Hey, Gav, did he start Barstool Outdoors before he was at Barstool? No, it was Barstool Outdoors is an account that we created when YP got here. So what's he mean he started it before he got here? I think Outdoors is something that he was started to do before he got to Barstool. Okay, okay. The TikTok, and Gaz is good for the facts. He says TikTok. TikTok was started by Quigs, right? So we started the, the Barstool Outdoors account on TikTok. Quigs ran it for two weeks, and then YP took it over from there. This is October of last year. Okay. That's these hands too, right? So saying that I didn't build the social is completely false. Now, next thing we talk about, oh, you don't do anything, all this stuff. And especially in regards to that type of stuff, every other franchise and brand at Barstool, right? Consists of normally multiple, multiple people, like three, four, five, six, seven, who knows? 
and, and they're all successful. It's no shots at them. But when you're talking about people that don't do anything or whatever, let's not get it confused. Pick one of the other 99 franchises that has an intern, a producer, all this stuff. I'm not this one. I'm the only human on earth getting paid to work on Barcelona doors full time. That's it. Or any time. Like, I'm the only human. Very recently, I was told by, um, we're, we're going through all these calls, mediator deals, all these different things, right? And Erica's like, oh, we got to, um, we got to have a meeting on Monday. I'm like, fuck, what's going on? I don't know. She calls me. She's like, hey, YP, we want to give you a long-term contract. We want to um, bet big on you, all these things. And I'm floored, right? I didn't know what was coming. I'm like, wow, that's fucking awesome. And she's like, I talked to Dave. He feels the same way, all this stuff. Wow, fucking awesome, right? The, I have bled for this car. I love it, dude. This is like, since I was a little kid, I used to be like reading Barcelona every day. Every single thing. I'm so grateful. I sat back and I got proof all... I, all this. I literally sat back. I told Eric, I was like, E, there's nothing that could come through these ears. No audio file, no MP3, nothing that could make me as happy as what you just said. I'm flattered. I'm grateful. David and Erica in Barcelona have let me grow from like literally living in my parents' basement to like the job that I've always wanted in my entire life. It's fucking awesome. No one's more appreciative. So anyways, I said, E, send over the contract, whatever. She's like, we'll send over tomorrow, all this stuff. I get it. I'm reading. Everybody telling me, oh, you should negotiate. That's how, that's how these things work. You got to get a lawyer. You got to do this. I don't have an agent like all these other people at Barcelona and all these things are like, you know, I don't know legal jack shit, right? My legal plan of action always has been trust Dave Portnoy, trust Erica, and just keep, keep it moving, right? So when this is going on, I'm like, you know what? I don't care about any of this stuff. If Barcelona Doors gets to be millions and millions big and we get on Netflix or Hulu or something, which I do believe, I watch Mediator, Chasing Monsters, all those shows on Netflix. I think right now, I don't know, but in with time and like a goal, I think we can make that happen where Outdoors is an enormous brand. So I'm like, you know what, E? I called her back. I said, I don't give a shit about money. I don't give a shit about the language of the contract, all this other nonsense. I just want like infrastructure to build outdoor. I said, I'm obviously going to sign it up ask her i literally said i'm like i'm obviously gonna sign it i just want infrastructure to help build outdoors maybe an intern a producer all these things to try to grow it past just me there's limitations with one person is it an excuse no and i've been grinding for all this time by myself and i'm i'm fucking happy but i'm just saying i'm like e i want some sort of infrastructure to build this i want to be able to ask kelly martin hey i can't get this Deion sanders randy moss episode going can you help me like how you get these gigantic celebrities for the other podcast all right fine she said okay yp cool we're all good. I'm, I'm like popping champagne, the place of my dreams. I'm like, this is awesome. Like, you know, all this more years, I'm excited, right? Then we go and do the biggest shoot ever for Meat Eater. And like for Barcelona Doors, a huge collaboration, right? And come back, Black Friday, or uh, Thanksgiving, fly out of Bozeman, 4 a.m. I get back, have like a small family dinner, or whatever, because COVID, all the shit. I'm sitting there, I'm like, all right, fucking Black Friday, all the stuff. I know it. This is my fourth time here. Fourth go round of Black Friday at Barcelona. You think I'm going to go to sleep or some sort of shit? No chance. Duh. Like whatever. I know how big it is. I got shot by a paintball gun the last year, whatever, all this stuff people talk about. So I wait up. Dave sends his uh, email out. I see him tweeting all this stuff. Okay. I put up Barcelona AFCO um, Reaper hoodie. I'm tweeting it at midnight. Go to sleep, wake up, in the, and I wish I had tweeted 50,000 more times, obviously, at night. And next year, I'm going to tweet 10 trillion times. But put it up, wake up, retweet again for the morning things. Go on Barcelona Outdoors' uh, Twitter account, tweet it from there. The the great white hoodie, retweet it from my account. Go up. Just so we don't lose, sorry, that's a lie, right? All that stuff you just said. He did one tweet that night from his account at whatever, 12.36 a.m. and then went to bed. No, 12.37 p.m. Oh, 1236 AM he does uh, on his personal Twitter. Correct. And then, yes, then nothing until 1237 PM the next day. On his personal. So he hadn't used the million, right? So that, that's just, just lies about him. Like, all right. On Barca Outdoors Instagram stories, put him on there, all the hoodies, all the stuff, do an Instagram post, whatever. So to, to try to say on his thing that YP completely ignored Black Friday before he got yelled at. And obviously, after he yells at me, I'm going to fucking put up a thousand things because it's like, I don't know. Like, it, I know it's too late then, but it's like, what are you going to do? But to say I didn't do anything before is false. I don't know if Gaz had like black shoe polish in his eye or what, but like for a professional tweet counter, I feel like that's misrepresentative. If you said I didn't do enough, the last person I'm ever going to question on promotion or like um, social media strategies is Dave Portnoy. Fuck me. If I didn't do enough, I'm going to do 50,000 next year.
But to say I didn't do anything and completely disrespected and like, you know, didn't do anything, that's false. That's just not what happened. And if, if you think I didn't do enough, fuck me. Also saying that we didn't have enough merch or all this stuff. Dude, I looked at Riggs and um, Foreplay and Chicklets merch at midnight. I'm like, fucking God damn it. I let that slip as far as like with all these shoots and we filmed five episodes in the last month and all these things going back and forth, like between all these places and editing them and all this shit. I'm like, there's not enough new merch in outdoors. That pisses me the fuck off. I'm with you. If you want to yell at me for that, I'm on your fucking side. But to then go and, and after that, I know once I'm in the, um, in the meat grinder, that's fine. I'm taking it. As soon as I see the uh, outdoors like wanted thing or like, oh, we're going to replace and Dave saying on the podcast, oh, we'll get someone, you know, whatever, all this stuff. Man, for a guy that's like Mr. Um, have my guys back, like loyalty, all this stuff. I don't know. Like, it seems like a weird, like kind of like gutless business move to be like, oh, we're going to sign you for four years. And then like the next week be like, fuck you. Like, we're going to replace you. You're the worst person on earth. Which one is it? I don't understand. It's like I tweeted on Black Friday. I did the stuff. If it wasn't enough, fine, that's not enough. But is that warranted to be like, you're the fucking laziest piece of shit. We're, we'll get anyone in the world to like take over your baby. I don't know. To me, that seems fucked up. I'm, I'm sitting there. I got people texting me. I'm like, I don't know. I know as much as you. To try to say, oh, disrespectful, all these things, that feels extremely disrespectful for someone that I dropped my entire life, moved to New York to, to work for you because I wanted to. And... It's like, I've, I've show me a time I've ever crossed Barstool or crossed Dave or crossed behind the scenes, but, uh, uh, on camera, anything. Show me a time where I've ever fucking like double, double sided you or double switch. No one I've bled for Barstool this past four years and worked every fucking day doing this shit, making outdoors the thing that we're like talking about and all these things. And to like, uh, at the expense of my own private life, many times, like in bad ways, so to try to say like, oh, you know, disrespectful, we'll get anyone, man, to me, that's fucking gutless. And it's like, I can't stop them, whatever it is. I, I'm communicating now. So hopefully it's a miscommunication, but fuck that ripped my heart out of my chest. Fine. Whatever. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to say, but like, it feels like there's a miscommunication. And, and when it comes to like the stuff, it's like, oh, we want infrastructure. You want all these things. I think that would grow outdoors that the thing, the table has been set. I've been working on it now. It's like, give me a fucking one intern. Let's cook. I'm trying to make this the biggest thing. I, you don't think I wish I was doing Alex Cooper numbers. No fucking shit. Let's do it. Let's figure out that benefits both of us. So I don't know, man. It felt very like, uh, I, I don't understand that. Like, oh, you're on the ropes, all these things. It's like, wait, what? Like I just went since you signed me to a thing and we're like, oh, we want you for all these more years and a raise and all this shit. Is it just more of the same at this point? By the way, when Dave talks about honeymoon and the Himalayas, all this stuff, I went and paid for every single dollar, every penny of the trip to Montana, airfare, cars, hotels, everything, to go film this episode with Mediator with Sam Lundgren to get on their radar because I know I'm like looking at outdoors companies. I'm like, Mediator's the biggest thing going and hunting and all these things. I want to align with them for Barcelona Outdoors. I go up there, get on their radar, not four weeks late or not four days later, the Renella deal all comes together, right? So to me, and also I proposed to my fiance on a fucking Sunday, for Christ's sake. God forbid we have a, a life, a, a personal life, anything. I went and proposed. It was the best day of my life. Awesome. Then I went and worked and made this huge connection with an enormous outdoors company. To me, that seemed like a positive thing and paid for it all myself. I don't know. I, I don't know if it's a shtick. I don't know if it's content. I don't know what it is. But like, what are we talking about with that? You know what I mean? And the whole like, oh, YP's never in the office, all this stuff. To me, it would seem more valuable for your outdoors guy to be out filming outdoor stuff all the time than sitting in a desk and a laptop in a, in a lockdown New York City where COVID could be locked down and no travel at any time. I don't, I, the only thing I want is to have so much outdoor stuff coming out all the time that Dave, you never have to yell at me ever again. Every time I get shit bagged and my nutsack dragged across the coals of the internet for three weeks at a time, it's fucking sucks, man. The toxic circus of everything. I hate it. I'm trying to finish this season. So we have an entire season coming out in January, February. Then we're going to have one coming out in May, June, July, then one for the fall. So I never have to get yelled at again. That's why I'm not in the office. And if you want me to fly in for a few days or whatever and, and get in the mix and all things, fucking a hundred percent. I'm with it. Had some weird shit going on with family health stuff recently that I don't really want to talk about, but it's like, being close to family during these last couple months has been really, really valuable. I know that it's um, 
maybe been less in the mix of whatever. It's neither here nor there. If I need to come check in and all these things, but while this is all going on, we've never put out more outdoors content and the knife reviews and the like little educational videos that I'm sure like Dave hates or whatever, but like, let's just be real. There's never been more outdoor stuff coming on. We're gonna have three seasons in 2021. To me, that seems like a gigantic success. So if if all this thing I'm, I'm listening, if Dave, you hate the fuck out of me and, and think I'm a lazy piece of shit, then don't like, then why did you ask me for more or, or Barstool asked me for four more years, all these things. If you hate me, I don't know. I, I that's first of all, I love this fucking company. It's my dream job. I've never been happier to be anywhere in my life. So it's like, that's really disappointing if that's the case. But by all means, I'm sorry. I thought like by that, I'm like, here, you hate me and want me to get the fuck out of here. I don't know, man. Like I'm trying as hard as I can. Not, I'm going to be way better at communicating, but it's like, fuck hearing all this shit and, oh, we'll get anyone to run it, all these things. Man, that seems gutless from someone that like supposedly values loyalty and all this shit. I'm sorry. I should have tweeted more and had more items fine if something else, if you want me to come check in and maybe that will like temper down the like what are you doing shit i don't know fine but fuck man if you don't know me as a human or like whatever i don't know dude that's really disappointing i hope that's not the case but i just wanted to get these truths out there and kind of like um set the record straight on some of the stuff that was blatantly false i'm sorry go buy a reaper afco hoodie if you are, feel bad for me or something i don't know who knows what's gonna happen We'll see you on the flip side. I'm going to go hunt with Steve Renault. Let's go. Are we doing the second one too? Well, you can react to that first because. So it wasn't as bad as I thought. I mean, he's full. He is. He's got, uh, he's got some points that I feel like are okay. He also has a very used car salesman vibe. Um, and, and he changed his tune, I guess, in the second one because so season one, he did a lot of it himself. He's like, I want to do outdoors. And I think one of the good things about Barcel is like, all right, you want to go fucking do it, do it. And, you know, season one was a success. And then season two, we put everything behind it. So that's why I like the producers. Like, you know, I, we get the stats just to fucking back it up. But Eric, like Erica sent me and we spent, I don't know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 on like sending people. He didn't edit any of it. Season two was not edited by him. It was like totally done by Logan. We had Logan, Tom Mullins, uh, a kid quit. An editor quit, I think, because he didn't give him any credit. So we had a whole fucking team of people supporting him, put it all behind him to support it. So, you know, that part one, he went and did it himself. From then, it's like, okay, with anything, it's like, if you can prove you have something, we'll support it. That, again, that's what I think makes Barstool Barstool. It's like he earned that right to put the support. And we anything he asked for, we gave him. So when he's like, give me an intern, I don't know what the fuck that means. Like, go get an intern. Tell it's, anybody who has people work like Riggs, Riggs fucking created a team around. We don't like can't do that. That's never for someone who claims, you know, his bar stool. I don't know what he means. Like he needs permission. Like go get somebody. The major issue with YP and he alluded to it. He knows there's been questions now because he hasn't been the, in the office in forever. So, and he hasn't put anything out in forever. Like he talked about a knife video, but he did season one and he did season two. How many episodes is that? Like 15? 16. And how long a time period are we talking? Uh, we were in the old office, so what, 2018? So like a year, two years? That's all he's done. So no offense, I'm on 38 different shows. If I put out 16 episodes and I get that there's more editing, I put 16 episodes out a fucking week. So – when you're not in the office, you're unheard from, you're not tweeting, you're not putting out content, and we let you do it. I've reached out to him a couple times, like, what are you fucking doing? Because we're not hearing from you. He sends these convoluted emails. What the fuck are you doing? And then Black Friday rolls around, and you're nowhere to be found. And even before this happened, I reached out to our merch team because I saw the list. I may have said this. I saw the list of merchandise. Every brand, which he's talking about, have like 20 fucking things. YP had one new thing. One. He, he says he's been with the company four years. He had one fucking new thing. He also is like, I'm at home with my family and spending time. You had one new fucking thing, YP. And then as one tweet, from his personal account, which is what? The smallest of anything he has. Barcelona Outdoors, which has almost a million followers. Nothing. So 
when we get the report and he's got this logo, no new merch, it's like, what are you doing? So YP has taken what I would say is a, a path that a lot of people have and make me hate you, where you come in like he did, he's bringing in the koala, he's doing, I'll do anything, I'll do anything. He's on top of fucking stool scenes and whatever. And then he has a taste of success, which he had from that first fucking season and then the work ethic's gone. Now, he's saying it's there, and he's saying all this stuff about it, but there's nothing to show for it. There is just zero to show. He, everything's been in the pipeline, and even if it's three seasons, it's taken him three years. And again, after season one, and he proved himself, anything he asked for, we give him. So, you know, I don't always talk about gutless. Like, he makes it sound like his dream. Barcelona Outdoors is a great vertical. It's a great vertical. He didn't invent outdoors. He's the first one who I said to do it. Go look online. There's a million people who can replace YP and grow this faster. Be releasing material all the time, whatever. But we have stats here after he made it, and it's, like, almost embarrassing. And, by the way, the Erica thing, first of all, who calls Erica E? That had to be addressed. What a fucking douchebag thing to do. The very obvious fact with YP and why that contract was offered, the four years. Like, hey, how can you offer me a four-year fucking deal and then turn around and say you fucking hate me? Because YP was hitting me up about this meat eater thing. He's like, I need, can we do meat eater? It'll be huge for fucking uh, the outdoors, outdoors. I can be honest, I didn't even really know what meat eater is. I'm not an outdoor thing, but it's like, it's huge. It's the biggest thing. I'm going to be on their TV show or their pod or whatever. Meanwhile, the dude hasn't put anything out in fucking a year. Season two sucked. It was like 86% less views than season one. And he's like, I'm going to do this thing. And in my head, it's like, this guy's been on the road. I haven't seen him, and I don't even know when the last time I've seen him is. And now he's saying he's doing some collab with the biggest thing. And I'm like, Erica, is he under contract? And she's like, no. So it's like, well, we better fucking put him under contract because he's, he's claiming he's going to do this huge fucking thing. And they can just turn around and be like, I want all this money when he's done nothing for us in a fucking year. So that's why that con- – it was almost we didn't trust him. That's kind of where the contract came from. It's like we haven't seen this dude in forever, and now he's saying he's going to do a collab with some huge thing. What if he explodes when he's not on a contract? So we're sitting here with our dick in our hands where we haven't had an ounce of content from this guy in God knows how long, and now he's negotiating a, a big contract, and we didn't get the juice. So that's where the contract came from. For him to think me and Eric are on the same page, kind of nuts. That was my idea because it's like, again, I, I don't know when that next season's coming out. I, I don't know. I've asked – and for him not to sense that – and he said he sensed it. It's been brewing. It's like, we don't see you. We don't hear from you. And, and I don't know what he's talking about putting out content. There's on the Instagram page, and we have it. He's talking about all these things. So first of all, if you saw all of the producers went after him when he did this, and he retracted me, I like, know I got support. So he's not doing it alone. I don't know what the fuck that means. He said his girlfriend did it all. The producers are there. We're sending them. We're paying. We paid tons of money for it. Can Gaz, first off, can you do? Can you go through the social reports? Because I think we have a bunch of stat, data here and stuff. Yeah, dude, I got I – I never really get super pissed at, like, any of Barstool because I'm, like, the center of, like, causing a lot of controversy. But this wasn't, like, a controversy thing where I was trying to dig in on Black Friday. And then for him to take a shot and be like, you know, make the joke that he make and then be like, for your professional tweet counter, it's like, dude, like – my job is to make sure that we're doing stuff on social media. So I, everything's there for him to go look at. So he's like, Oh, that just didn't happen. Gaz just can't count. Like anyone, I challenge anyone on the internet to go back and look at any fucking thing from black Friday. It's all there. It doesn't like, I didn't just make this up. Like I was by the, way, the first account, the first time he, he put something on the main, uh, the main outdoors Instagram, which is the biggest thing we got was after both me and Erica told him to. By the way, we have stats. I didn't want to do it, but after the Blues won the Stanley Cup, he just – it's almost like he got full of himself, and he stopped fucking doing shit. So, I mean, we got the stats. It's not really fair, but Barstool Outdoors, outside of KFC, the one-minute man, outside of that, which is posted every single day and this thing, is the number one most promoted brand by the, by the 
Barstool main accounts. Wow. So when you fucking say you did it yourself with any help, that's what I mean. Anybody with the main engine pushing it because Barstool fucking outdoors has like snakes eating people and fucking these super viral videos in the main hub is promoting it more than anything else. YP himself is fucking posting 24th out of 34 brands. 24th out of 34. This is after basically the Blues winning the Stanley Cup. November 19th, 2019 to February 12th, 2020. He didn't write one blog. Not fucking one. The thing that prompted it, a St. Louis, uh, Louis Blues guy had a heart attack on the fucking bench and he didn't blog it. And I was like, I wish we had a fucking blues guy. That was the first time I blogged it. So he just started doing less. And I get he's on the road and doing stuff, but he's been on the road forever. We've had two fucking seasons. Where is it? Like, what are you doing? And put that in with fucking not promoting Black Friday, which he just kind of poop poops. He's like, oh, yeah, I've been here for four years. I saw every other fucking brand. Riggs has 3,000 products. Chicklets, I didn't. Well, yeah, that's what fucking drives me nuts. So there it is. And then you talked about overall, it before. Overall, that rant, I think he's a little used car salesman. I think he has some points, but I also think he's lying. Like, he's been gone for fucking ever. Ever. Well, I think that's the biggest thing, and you brought it up before, um, and we talked about the social media thing, but, you know, the people who worked on it, you tweeted, you're like, I didn't realize how many people disliked him. A lot of people who worked on it took a lot of offense to that. Big time. And he, he backtracked in the next being like, there's more people. But that's, a, but that's part of the whole thing. It's like, we're supporting it. Don't act like we're not supporting it. I give him credit for being a go-getter and going film stuff. But dude, how long do you want to live off that? Like at some point you do something, and if you're and if you're not gonna put out content, you keep saying it's coming down the road, it's coming down the road. Fucking, you better promote Black Friday. And if you're gonna throw that tantrum, like you don't own it, YP. Like you're a fucking nobody if you're not here. Like you don't deserve some cookie for like coming over and do it. We gave you the opportunity. That's what, we treat you the same as everybody. But you, you can say you're doing all this shit, and behind the scenes nobody fucking sees it. Like. Nobody sees it. And he sends me emails and I've asked Jen, I've asked Erica. I've, it's like, is YP doing anything? And everyone's kind of like, I don't know. That's kind of the answer. But then you get to this Black Friday and it's so easy just to, to like promote, promote because we are spending money on you and we're spending producers on you. And I've heard some don't like you because you just fucking act like it's nothing. I just feel like there's a guy keeps mentioning more famous people. I got this guy, I got that guy. He just strikes me as somebody who became very much like whatever is good for me and lost track that he works here. Yeah, it really was kind of a thousand cuts since the blues thing. That's the thing. It's like, it's not, and he still doesn't do it. So how many, like, what do you need? I've been calling him out and saying it. And then he doesn't do black Friday. And again, even before black Friday went, I went to Alice in our merch. I'm like, how does YP have one fucking thing? I'm like, does it sell? And she gave me the numbers. It was so late. I was just like, whatever. But then he doesn't fucking promote. Go look at it. like post. It wasn't promoted. We fucking went and looked at it and him playing. Oh, sorry. I did one tweet. That's not enough. Like, what are you fucking talking about? One tweet's not enough. Like you have this big brand all you care about is getting yourself. That's what I believe. It's yourself. It's not Barcelona, Joyce. It's fucking you, YP. And if you cared about everybody else, you wouldn't have taken all the credit. You wouldn't have said you're doing it by yourself when you don't have these fucking producers. What was that thing he wrote? He, he had some fucking... And here's, by the way, the actual last 24... Um, last 24 months, Barstool Outdoors says from the Instagram account... 9,600 and 600 is like extra number. 9,600 to, why can't I do this? 9 comma 6250. What is uh, that? The stat you're trying to read. I love you. Uh, the last 24 months, the Barstool Sports Instagram has shouted out X account. So KFC Radio has gotten a shout out 19 times per month on average over the last two years. Barstool Outdoors is second. And KFC obviously does one minute man every single day. So. Right, and four plays third, like Caller Daddy's fucking last. So, I mean, w there is all the muscle of everything we're doing from the fucking producers to the fucking social supporting it. 
We got nothing to show. Just give the love back. And, and if you don't agree with it, shut up. Like, just you shut up. Don't call Erica E. Call me gutless because I'm telling you, YP, I can replace you like fucking that. And if it was just you, like you need these resources, if it's just you, I promise you, you're not just sitting there doing nothing as much as you did. Like when I started this myself, I can't go months without content. You got to fucking do everything. He's, he's ahead of the game. He's got the fucking support. What was the thing he says about his fucking, this one too? He, he said his girlfriend did it all. YP, finally got a day to celebrate a ton of hard work. My partner and everything yesterday. The girl shot edited, produced, ran social media, traveled, got sick, got healed, broke bones, healed bones, took COVID tests you just didn't have to get just to go and shoot with me, worked our ass off every day to make Barcelona sports outdoors and my life happen. How'd you like, and it goes on and on. And, and she tags him. That's more tags than we got on Black Friday. How would you like to be a producer who's actually doing it, never get a shout out from YP, and he's fucking sucking his girlfriend's clit? How would you like that? These guys are traveling all over the fucking place in the jungle. They don't want to be there. He doesn't give them one ounce of credit. Not fucking one. Oh, I got yeah. people lined up to take this job. And he comes at me like that. And the, the only reason he got that fucking contract is because he's talking about a world I don't know. And I'm not going to let myself get fucked where he's been living off my fucking tit for the last year. And then he's just going to bounce. I don't fucking know. Oh, those guys deserve a clit lick, too. They do. You're right. Everyone deserves a clit lick, Eddie. Agreed. You can do anything you fucking want at this company. That's one of the beauties of it. You're not going to necessarily, like, you know, you, if I think it rings true, if you make good points or whatever, but you, you call me, like, gutless and this and that, I don't fucking owe YP anything. He owes me everything. So I am very much – going to look, and if Cash Daniel, I think, can grow outdoors better than he can, I'll fucking hire him. If I think a girl can do it better than he can, like, I have no loyalty to him. And whatever he thought, maybe, like, in this situation, I would have called me rather than air it out. But I still don't care. I'm going to do what I think is for Barcel Sports, not what I think is best for YP. Will you think, when you hear the name E, will you think of Entourage or Erica now? <laughs> Just shows what a disrespectful cunt he is. Yeah, and it looks like he's not going to come here, so I don't, I don't know. I, I, I guess we're, I, I guess. And we're I mean, I'll here. get over it. I, I will say, I don't. He's always talks and thinks he has an answer for everything, and and I, it's so hard to know what he's doing because I'm not an outdoors guy. He doesn't produce anything, and he just says everything takes forever to shoot, and he's on the road. But come on, man. You, the bottom line is you have 16 episodes in like two years, 16 fucking episodes in two years. And when you're in the office, we see people fucking working around the clock, around the clock. His season one earned him the right, everything he did to do what he, he started to do. And eventually that credibility and, and, and the, the like equity that he earned started to run out. That's essentially what happened. Like if you put a, if one of those little time things and you flip it over, the sands of time were slowly running out. But it wasn't a surprise. I didn't say anything for months and months and months. And then I started saying like, what the fuck's YP doing? Like, I don't ever hear from him. I don't see him. I don't see anything on social. Like what's going on? And then it hit zero when he didn't promote Black Friday. And for him to come out and be like gutless, it's like, dude, we've given you the longest leash I think anybody has ever got in this company, except maybe Jack Mac. Jack Mac? Yeah, the fa the guy who just stopped blogging, oh, except I his reaction. About, I was like talking about my guy. I was like, no, oh, the Jack. fake Jack Mac, the fake Jack Mac who didn't blog for like a year. And I'm like, bro, I gotta let you go. You haven't blogged in a year. He's like, yeah, no, you right decision. The only difference here is YP is like, are you kidding me? Like, but we have nothing for you, dude. We have nothing for you. There's nothing there. You post one fucking outdoor video a day on Instagram. That's it. So I think a lot of people, when they saw it, they were wanting to see a reaction. I think 
You're a lot calmer than I think people would have anticipated. So you're, he's, he's the still- video I don't think was as bad as I was being led to believe, but I think he's just living in a fantasy world. Like, so he still has company, his job, obviously. What's that? So he still has his job, obviously. Yeah, he's not fired. But I may, I may though, like, um, clear and present danger, just pull the plug on the operation and be like, you're coming home. Like, you're in the office now. Reassign him? No, I don't know. Reassign, it's just like, I don't know what you're doing. I just don't know what you're doing. You, you keep saying you're doing something, but, like, nothing's coming out. Would you ever start a like, competing outdoors company, like in the B-Bob, B-Bob, B-Bob? No, I, I would find someone else to take it over who I think is going to produce content faster than he does. So that's still on the table, the 700 people who applied that's still open? 100% on the table. It's not his thing. Like, you, you found a vertical nobody did, and Barstool promoted the fuck out of it and built it with you. But without Barstool, it's like ours. And if I think somebody's not building it to the level they should be, then we got, we got something that we may have to make a change. We can't come out with 16, uh, eight episodes per year. Yeah. Well, all right, then. It looks like we're done here probably. Um, Dave, en- enjoy your uh, enjoy your. You always got me, Eddie. You always got me, Miami. I can't fucking relax. It's all right. Yeah, you're in Miami with little work, and now you got the clit licks for the rest of the weekend. You'll be good. <laughs> all right. All right? Yep. That's it for today, everybody. We'll be back with episode 12 next week. Bye. See ya. Thanks, Dave.